Story Tube by Joshua Gen 2005 Slavery Today 21st Century Slavery Explained Find out whether you are under slavery. Slavery in 21st century in our previous video, Slavery Explained in 10 minutes, we gave a definition to slavery and how this word came into being and when you separate the word into two words only that you will fully understand the meaning of it. We all know that 2018 was a very significant year in Israel as it celebrated 6,000th year from Adam during this year. Why we mention this here is also very significant and special as modern day slavery in 2019 goes back at least to the very ancient times where the act of slavery is concerned. The Holy Bible is very clear in recording that. Ecclesiastes chapter 01 and verse 9. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. It says there is no new thing in this world and anything we see or hear as new as something that happened in the past already. Sometimes it is really surprising to believe the things that happen around us, the things we hear around us but, when we examine those with the word of God, which has the supreme authority over and everything under the sun, we see how related they are, to the ancient events that occurred long ago. Here we are not trying to preach Christianity to you but enhance your knowledge which explains many things in ancient times and, when we need to enhance our knowledge we need the Holy Bible too as, it runs back to ancient times and also most scholars today do not dispute the authenticity of what is recorded in the Holy Bible. We do hereby would like to mention a practice that ancient Israelites used to practice which God himself forbids and which is relevant to slavery in modern times. We know ancient Israelites used to worship the pagan god Molech. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 21 And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy god, I am the Lord. The statue of Molech, which was made of brass, and they heated him from his lower parts, and his hands being stretched out, and made hot, they put the child between his hands, and it was burnt, when it vehemently cried out, but the priests beat a drum, that the father might not hear the voice of his son, and his heart might not be moved. A rabbinical tradition attributed to the Yaqout of Rabbi Simeon, says that the idol was hollow and was divided into seven compartments, in one of which they put flour, in the second turtle doves, in the third an ewe, in the fourth a ram, in the fifth a calf, in the sixth an ox, and in the seventh a child, which were all burned together by heating the statue inside. How does this story is being related to the modern day slavery? Molech was a pagan Canaanite god. People of this world do not mind how a blessing would come but when a blessing is being bestowed upon one man, people will flock and follow and believe that testimony and will become a slave to that belief. When the demons that are coming along and working along with this demon God gets hold of a man he will become a slave to what he believes and even go the extent of sacrificing his own child to that pagan God. Now we see a man becoming a slave to a god and making his own seed a slave to be burnt on Molech's arms as a sacrifice to receive a blessing. If you make a deep study on Molech you will find that it's a bloodthirsty demon that is working through him all the time. How does this relate to modern day slavery? This is exactly what is taking place in this world today. We will go through point by point to make you understand the gravity of becoming a slave. Remember the definition of slavery is slay, every. In our last video we gave seven kinds of modern day slaves and also we add one category here as the eighth. 1. Sex slaves by human trafficking. 2. Child slaves by human trafficking and as victims of war. 3. Slaves drug lords use. 4. Abducted slaves for body parts harvesting. 5. Political slaves. 6 terrorists and suicide bombers. 7. Slaves of medicines. 8. Workplace slavery. We would like to take one point at a time but the first two as it is going together we will look at it as one. Sex and child slaves. All the countries in the world record missing persons. In so many countries it is a daily occurrence. Police receive complaints, they make investigations, and they appoint committees but still the missing increase every day. Hope for Justice organization records the following statistics about modern-day slavery. 40.3 million people in forced labor, sexual exploitation, domestic servitude, and forced marriage worldwide. 
$150 billion made each year from forced labor, that's over $4,750 a second. Often when an organization or a group of people are involved in illegal activity with humans, slavery is the master trade. There are some countries that allow their men and women taking the flight to Middle Eastern countries as domestic workers but end up being slaves in those countries. The authorities of those countries are often made silence by offering lucrative bribes and kickbacks by organized clans and job agencies. The purpose of why it is being done is, to exploit a person through prostitution, other forms of sexual exploitation, forced labor or services, slavery, servitude or removal of organs from a person without their consent. For the people or clans that are involved in human trafficking, it is the money, that they are slaves to. Remember the fathers used to send their children through fire to the demon Molech for a favor. Do you see the similarity? The Freedom United website is recording slavery as, an estimated 40 million people are in modern slavery all over the world. This generates an estimated $150 billion in illegal profits every year, making forced labor the second largest international crime. Bonded labor or debt bondage is when a worker's labor is demanded to repay a loan. The person is usually coerced into working long after the loan is repaid. Often, the debt is passed into the next generation. Forced labor is any work that people are forced to do against their will. 16 million, or 64% of people in forced labor are in the private economy, exploited by individuals or enterprises. According to the United Nations International Labor Organization ILO, there are 24,900,000 people in forced labor. Child slavery is one of the most shocking forms of slavery. Worldwide it is estimated that one in four victims of slavery are children. Children's labor is exploited in many jobs, including physical labor and domestic slavery or as child soldiers. Live-in migrant domestic workers are particularly vulnerable to exploitation because confined to a private home, they are isolated from protections offered in a regular workplace. Child marriage can be another form of slavery, if the following three elements are present, if either party hasn't given their free and informed consent, if either party is being subjected to control and a sense of ownership, and if either party cannot realistically leave or end the marriage. Servile marriage can affect adults too. Human trafficking is the act of recruiting or transferring a person by means of coercion, abduction or deception for the purpose of exploitation. Although most people assume sexual exploitation to be the most common reason for trafficking people, it is in fact for forced labor. As these figures most probably the best and the nearest available to us, we can determine who are involved in these crimes. Find a country that lacks law and order, and there you will find a country that is into human trafficking. Most of the time people who oppose human trafficking are the very people who are involved in it. Just think, if law and order is being practiced properly, why do we need a ministry in the government for women's and children's rights? Just consider the temple prostitutes in India, which originates from the Babylonian Empire times, child monks in Buddhist countries, celibacy practicing religions which the priests get involved in pedophilia, a gay activity not forgetting straight sex with same kind and who sometimes involved themselves in child sacrifice orgies. Any activity without the consent of one party could be called slavery. Let's take the next act of slavery now, drugs and narcotics slavery. Sometimes we would like to call it the heroin addiction but remember this slave act could start with a bottle of beer and could end up with fentanyl which is a synthetic opiate. All this is called slavery as each and every component of this kind has the lords who control the sale, the flow, the distribution, transportation, money laundering, making more people join the fun by offering free intakes at the start, introducing to a drug without the permission from the user, giving on credit, drug-related killings and crimes. One person will start small with little quantities but the intake will increase by the day and soon his or hers earnings would not be sufficient enough to support the addiction and that is where the drug lords will make them peddlers and introduce the drugs to fresh flocks. It is a known fact that every prison all over the world has drug-related offenders caged. Haiti was a rich country but learn what happened to that country to become one of the poorest countries in the world. You can easily find more than a dozen videos documenting what happened to Haiti on YouTube. You find more than 100 million drug addicts in the world at different levels. 
Some are using only cannabis up to fentanyl users who will be reaching the gates of death faster than they anticipate. Drug menace only could be eradicated if these kinds of slaves are freed, which is an impossible task, as to do so, first you need to eradicate the drug lords and the makers first. The drug lords in the world think or made to think they are slave masters but the people who receive the kickbacks from them are the real slave masters. The masters protect the drug lords and make easy access for them to operate risk-free until the drug lords think they are better than the masters and refuse certain kickbacks or bribes as promised by them to these corrupt politicians or leaders of their respective country. Rival gangs often engage themselves in heavy arm battles over supremacy in a certain area until more than half the gangs are murdered or slain by ambush or getting the police involved in raiding their respective hideouts or distribution centers. Slay every definition still applies to this kind of slavery too. Just imagine how these 25 cities that were big earners in the tourist industry because of their natural beauty became the most dangerous cities in the world. 1. Aleppo in Syria. This city was once the largest trade hub in Syria. It was home to ancient art, sports, and schools. However, due to its unfortunate uprising of April Spring, it became the front line for the civil war in Syria that sparked in 2011. Parts of the city remain under siege to this day. The entire country has been deemed a war zone and unsafe for travel while illegal arms, drugs, and slave trade is rampant. 2. Caracas, Venezuela. Venezuela the best oil-rich country in the world today faces economic doom. Murder, looting, prostituting, kidnapping, civil commotion, drugs abuse and you name it all are there. They even lack the basic commodities inside the country. Economic hit men have hit the country till it went to the laundries. 3. Kabul, Afghanistan. Kabul used to be thriving with trade and tourists from all corners of the globe. Its beautiful gardens were unparalleled by any other. The sad state that Kabul is currently in has made the country less than inhospitable for travelers, especially those from Western societies. Bombings, kidnappings, and general gang-related violence have become rampant in Kabul. Terrorist groups have made this once beautiful place a living hell for the country men and who will visit the city. 4. Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. There's nothing horrible than living in a city or country where the law enforcement is in the pockets of the bad guys or slave masters. This is the sad truth that's currently happening in Ciudad Juarez. The flow of drugs and human trafficking throughout the country and even the continent usually stems from Ciudad Juarez. Avoid this city at all costs for the time being. It is a place where you don't know when you will disappear. 5. Juba, South Sudan civil war and general violence especially religious riots throughout Juba have deemed the city an unsafe destination for foreign travelers. It's a shame since one of the most beautiful sights to behold is the stunning migration of various species passing through South Sudan. Today it is more than dangerous place to travel. 6. Cape Town, South Africa. South Africa has been one of the more tourist-friendly spots in the continent, but the city of Cape Town must be avoided at all costs. The crime rate has spiked due to the overwhelming population living under the poverty line. It's possible to travel through the city but only in large groups and never at night as one does not know when will trouble invites you. 7. Sana'a, Yemen Ever since the catastrophic bombing that took place at several World Heritage Sites in Sana'a in 2015 and there onwards, the country has been in economic and political turmoil. Foreigners are strongly advised not to visit the city at the risk of falling victim to another unpredictable terror attack. Most of the time the terror groups are on drugs where CAT is in daily use. 8. Rio de Janeiro, Brazil Although many towns and places in Brazil have extremely high crime rates, Rio de Janeiro, as a popular tourist destination, has to take the cake. Only 10 years earlier the city's streets were relatively safe and free of crime, but lately, gang activity and drug smuggling have put the city on lockdown. Visitors still come to enjoy the resorts and beaches, but they do it at their own risk as all vices are plenty in the place. 9. Kinshasa, the Democratic Republic of Congo The country of Congo has been one of political and economic instability for the greater portion of recent history. 
The Virunga Mountains used to invite nature lovers from around the globe to feast their eyes on majestic gorillas, but it is no longer safe. In the capital city, Kinshasa, crime and gangs tear the city apart due to lack of law and order making the country poorer by the day. 10. Guatemala City, Guatemala Guatemala City, the capital of Guatemala, is tormented by drug cartels, drug-related violence, and gang activity. Despite the high murder rate, robberies, muggings, and holdups, the city remains one of the most visited places in Central America. One has the risk of visiting the city. 11. Khartoum, Sudan Khartoum is the meeting point of the White and Blue Nile Rivers one of the most beautiful places in the world. Due to the constant conflicts in their government and guerrilla militia, Sudan has been in a state of emergency. Movement in and out of the city is heavily monitored, and foreign visitors are more than likely going to be turned away for their own safety. 12. Acapulco, Mexico During the recent past, Acapulco, Mexico, was a safe haven and popular destination for travelers looking to hit the beaches. However, findings show that the city has one of the highest murder rates in the world. If you feel like risking it, you'll be advised to stay within the property of the resort you're visiting but be warned that crimes usually take place just outside and you are unaware when you will be in the midst of a crime. 13. Islamabad, Pakistan Although Islamabad has only been the capital of Pakistan for roughly 60 years now, it's a high-risk area for terror attacks and kidnappings, especially for Westerners. The most dangerous times to visit this city would be during religious holidays and political elections and when tensions are high between the West and the region. 14. Baghdad, Iraq The US came in to establish democracy in Iraq but the fail state situation with that move has created a very dangerous place for all travelers, the US has deemed Baghdad and many other cities in the Middle East as unsafe travel destinations. As U.S. troops are pulled away from Iraq, the future of the country and its capital city are shrouded in mystery, but one thing is certain, this war-torn country is not going to heal itself anytime soon. 15. Pyongyang, North Korea North Korea has been hostile towards the international community but strangely friendly towards visitors, except to those from the U.S. The good news is that Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un has taken some steps to introduce political reconciliation, but the bad news is that it's unclear what they'll be and when they'll be applied. It's best to visit the friendlier country just down south. Being a very suspicious country of visitors don't try your luck with your cameras when you are filming inside the country as authorities might suspect you as a spy. As it is supreme leader worship country anything could be possible when it comes to visiting as most of his soldiers and secret police is looking forward to make the leader happy even going that extra mile with any visitor to the country. 16. Bogota, Colombia Bogota is known for some of its beautiful architecture, mysterious art pieces, and street crime. Murders, kidnappings, muggings, and street violence are just some of the things that plague the streets. Unfortunately, not many cities outside of Bogota are any safer either. The glory of that beauty is surrounded by all nonsense at present and has become a dangerous place to be for a visitor. 17. Karachi, Pakistan Karachi is home to some of the most vocal terrorist groups in the world. It's not surprising since the country, in general, has been known to breed some of the most prominent leaders of many Islamic terror groups. In Karchi, assassinations and kidnappings aren't uncommon, so it's best to avoid traveling through the city if at all possible. Though newly appointed Prime Minister is trying his best to change this system and bring back the glorious friendly atmosphere once was, still we do not see any major changes to this region. 18. Aswan, Egypt Egypt is known for its haunted pyramids, exotic dances, and deep roots in religion, but it's also the unfortunate home of rampant violence. In Aswan, cases of assault towards men and women in the streets out in public are not unheard of. Tensions in politics and instability are the main driving factors behind it all. The Muslim Brotherhood that is operating there since 1928 is thwarted but still a major force underground. Often churches of worship are attacked by Muslim extremists and violence could be daily occurrence which take the tourism industry to launders by the day. 19. San Pedro Sula, Honduras For many years now, San Pedro Sula in Honduras has been on the list of the most violent cities on the planet. 
The main issue that contributes to the downward spiral that the city has been experiencing is trafficking illegal firearms and the use of them on law enforcement and members of parliament. Some say when law and order is in disarray a country will go to dogs. When the countrymen are overlooked by a government the people will take law into their hats. If you want to travel here it will be at your own risk that you will proceed. 20. Mexico City, Mexico Mexico City is home to the ruins of Aztec and Mayan cultures, as well as around 10 million citizens are roaming the streets. Despite being so densely populated and economically stable, it's not exactly a safe place for tourists. If crime and assault aren't enough to ward you off, just know that earthquakes are common in the city. Perhaps that's nature's way of preventing travelers from visiting. Rival gangs are on war for supremacy on drug dealing and traveling should be at your own risk. 21. Mumbai, India This city located on the country's west coast is the capital of Maharashtra state. It's an urbanized city that's home to more than 10 million people from all over the country. However, terrorist activity, rape, prostitution, human traffic to bring new faces to brothels and scams on tourists and locals alike put everybody on a state of constant fear. If you're a woman looking to travel alone to a foreign land, avoid going through Mumbai because you might be next who will end up in a brothel. Though it is the land Mahatma Gandhi dreamed of, you will see the plight today and how humanity has deteriorated to a level of no coming back. 22. San Salvador, El Salvador San Salvador is a haven for many of the country's street gangs who ill, extort, and smuggle illegal firearms and narcotics. In 2015, almost 2,000 people were brutally murdered by street gangs, and most of the crimes that occurred that year were never solved. Law and order is no more found due to kickbacks from the drug and arms lords. 23. Distrito Central, Honduras dangerous weather isn't the only thing that that torments the municipality of Distrito Central. Violent crimes on both men and women are something of a norm to the people of Honduras. This municipality consists of two cities Tegucigalpa and Comayaguela, and neither of them is safe. Gunfights erupt sporadically during the daytime between the police and several drug cartels, so it's clear that this district is not a place to seek relaxation. Traveling here will be at your own risk as you don't know when the shooting will erupt between the rival groups. 24. Medellin, Colombia This is considered to be Colombia's most dangerous city. The murder rate in Medellin has increased dramatically over the years as rival gangs fight to gain control over territory and drug trade deals. Pablo Escobar, the notorious drug lord who has managed to escape from the arms of the police numerous times, has set up base in the city. As a traveler even if you are a drug user, still you are in danger to visit there. 25. Natal, Brazil A few years back, the Brazilian government deployed a squad of more than a thousand armed policemen to bring restore calm after a gang-driven riot occurred. Since then, Natal has been cited by the UN as having of the largest murder rates per capita. You do not know when you will be in the middle of a riot and travelers should go there at their own risk. We have just covered 25 cities that are unsafe to travel. When thinking of these places biblically, God created all these places to be beautiful and he says he was happy creating them but see the plight of these places today? All these places are somewhat under slavery and the definition of slavery is slay, every. When slavery is present, killing will follow naturally. Those were 25 cities that travelers are advised not to visit but there are many more places today in the world which are dangerous as many kinds of slavery is practiced in those places. Number 4 on my list is, abducted slaves for body parts harvesting. Human organ transplanting, when this started? The Book of Enoch which is an extra-biblical textbook records that how human organ transplantation started in this world. The 200 watchers who came to this world from heavenly abode and went against God's law are the ones who taught the humans to make organ transplantation. God never liked this practice and I believe still he does not like it though the scientific field see it as a breakthrough in medical science. Why I say God did not like the idea is how it is done today and God knew how this will be done someday without the consent of the other party or by force to do so due to poverty stricken world. Then you are forced like a slave. When describing organ trafficking, there is often confusion as to how this crime can happen. 
Global Financial Integrity GFI, estimates that 10% of all organ transplants including lungs, heart and liver, are done via trafficked organs. Point one. However, the most prominent organs that are traded illicitly are kidneys, with the World Health Organization WHO, estimating that 10,000 kidneys are traded on the black market worldwide annually, or more than one every hour. On their own, these numbers can be stark, however, when compared to average wait times for organs in developed countries, one can start to better understand the demand being diverted to black markets. In Canada, it is estimated that the average wait time for a kidney is four years with some waiting as long as seven years. In the US, the average wait time for a kidney is three to six years according to the National Kidney Foundation. In the UK, wait times average two to three years but could be longer. It is difficult to know exactly how much transplant tourism generates annually worldwide but it is estimated that the illegal organ trade conservatively generates approximately $840 million to $1.7 billion annually, according to GFI. Human organ trade is the trade of human organs, tissues, or other body products, usually for transplantation. There is a global need or demand for healthy body parts for transplantation, which far exceeds the numbers available. Organ trafficking, the sale and purchase of human organs for transplantation, is a widespread crime. In most cases, the organ is a kidney, sold by a living person, illegally. Many countries have laws that prohibit the selling and buying of organs and ban physicians from transplanting organs obtained through payment. Mexico is not considered one of the worst countries for organ trafficking. The grisly practice is thought to be most prevalent in Israel, India, China, Pakistan, Turkey, Brazil, Nepal, the Philippines, Kosovo, Iran, and former Soviet states in Eastern Europe. Over 114,000 people are on the organ wait list in the United States, and a new person is added every 10 minutes, reported by American Transplant Foundation, 2018. On average, 20 people die every day waiting for an available organ in the United States alone, American Transplant Foundation, 2018. The legally available organs for transplant only satisfy about 10% of the global organ transplant need. The long wait lists and grim results of waiting too long drive a lot of people to participate in transplant tourism and organ trafficking. Organ trafficking is the practice of stealing or buying organs through exploitation to be sold on a black market for profit, and transplant tourism is traveling to another country for the purpose of buying, selling, or receiving organs. In recent times we have found China to be a safest and quickest place to find a transplant as the wait could be one week to a month comparing to other countries as China was exposed of cutting their prisoners for organ harvesting. There is no reliable data on organ trafficking, but the World Health Organization 2004 believed it to be steadily on the increase, with brokers charging wealthy recipients $100,000 plus and giving impoverished donors as little as $1,000, both amounts in US dollars. It is also estimated that 10% of the organ transplants done globally are completed using black market organs, Negri, 2016, United Nations, 2018. Cultural and religious customs ban or discourage some individuals from donating organs willingly or receiving post-mortem organ donations, World Health Organization, 2004. Illegal organ harvesting generally is not harvesting organs from willing donors going against cultural laws for the sake of philanthropy, but harvesting from unwilling or uninformed donors through exploitation of impoverished, indebted, homeless, uneducated, and refugee people, United Nations, 2018. It is difficult to know exactly how many people have been victims or recipients of illegally harvested organs because of the complex nature of organ trafficking, like human trafficking in general, which leads to unreliable statistics and underreporting. Organ trafficking victims, as with most human trafficking victims, are generally poor, or refugees who cross borders after losing parents, husbands, wives, due to war-vulnerable populations. There are rare instances where victims are put under anesthetic and wake to find their organs missing or are murdered for their organs. As a whole, coercion of living donors is more common. It is most common for victims of organ trafficking to be recruited through brokers, who are individuals who recruit organ suppliers and connect them with organ recipients. 
Recruiters brokers are usually people who may be from the same communities or ethnicity of a vulnerable population so as to build trusting relationships easier. The recruiters then make promises to the organ suppliers like large sums of money or release from debt and convince them that the organ is not needed. Specifically in the case of kidneys, the most commonly harvested organ from living donors, recruiters will tell victims that the kidney will grow back, having two kidneys is unnatural, or that they have a large and a small kidney and removal of the small kidney is harmless. Victims rarely receive the full amount of money promised, if they receive any compensation at all. In some cases, the post-removal healthcare costs for a living organ trafficking victim add to their previous debt and worsen their financial situation China is especially well known for organ trafficking, with reports of prisons executing prisoners to illegally harvest their organs against their consent when they are a potential match for a recipient. The United States, Canada, the Czech Republic, and Israel have begun to take action to prevent their citizens from engaging in transplant tourism involving China, Doctors Against Forced Organ Harvesting, DAFOH, 2019. Alternatively, organ procurement through purchase in Iran is sometimes legal, as Iran is the only country in the world where it is legal to sell organs. Iran has established a base price for organs at $4,600, but that is only when the organs are procured legally which is often not the case, as poor people still go through brokers and are paid an unknown, under-the-table price. One would hope that only a few isolated countries are major participants in organ trafficking, but unfortunately it is a global business where organs are bought from the poor and sold to the wealthy. Organ recipients participating in transplant tourism are mostly traveling from the United States, Canada, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf states, Japan, and Taiwan into Costa Rica, Panama, Ecuador, Colombia, Egypt, Kosovo, Cyprus, Israel, Azerbaijan, China, and the Philippines to receive organs. While not necessarily hot locations for transplant tourism, the following countries have been identified as organ recipients, Australia, Canada, Israel, Japan, Oman, Saudi Arabia, and the United States. India, Pakistan, China, Bolivia, Brazil, Iraq, Israel, Moldova, Peru, Turkey, and Colombia have all been identified as common organ sellers. One of the difficulties with organ trafficking is the participation of the medical field and medical professionals in maintaining the industry. Doctors, nurses, ambulance staff, and entire hospitals participate in illegal organ harvesting and transplanting. The medical field is not the only industry upholding illegal organ trade, though. The United Nations 2011, cites that travel agents, insurance agents, and faith-based organizations that call on organ hunters also act as major players in maintaining the illegal buying and selling of harvested organs. Also we see a lot of pre-planned wars in the world today. First World War and Second World War were conspired wars to make the warring factions go bankrupt after investing so much on weaponry. The people who were in the arms trade became very rich after these two wars while the masses of those countries had to pay a higher amount of taxes to meet these expenses. Today there are wars fought for two reasons, 1. Arms trade. 2. Human body parts harvesting. It is recorded during the conflict in Syria only, 18,000 children lost their body organs due to running away to avoid getting killed. The children were treated as dirt on a garbage dump and were not shown any mercy when it came to this business. Children of a country are the future of that country ASND when you destroy them the country will have no future. Time to come, this trade will grow hundredfold as the need is getting higher and higher. Enoch Book 1 Chapter 1 Verse 1 the words of the blessing of Enoch, wherewith he blessed the elect and righteous, who will be too, living in the day of tribulation, when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. Enoch chapter 7 from verse 1, and all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them, and they taught them charms too, and enchantments, and the cutting of roots, and made them acquainted with plants. And they three, became pregnant, and they bare great giants, whose height was three thousand ells. Do you notice the phrase cutting of roots? What do you do with cutting of roots and making them grafted? All kinds of transplantations. So this is a multi-million trade based of forced slavery. Number 5 in my list is, political slaves. 
The whole problem with regard to political slaves depends on these points. 1. Idiots will appoint and vote for cronies for short-term gain. In the first place, idiots are made by politicians, who twist the law to help his supporters. These supporters do not consider reasoning but, whether the outcome is good or bad, they will vote for their boss. Though we don't see this kind in European or Western countries, we see this often in the Asian and African countries. These idiots even kill to satisfy the desires of their bosses knowing that the law will be twisted and they will be coming out of prisons in no time. On the other hand, these politicians are so corrupt, they will value everything with greed. Greed for money, greed for status, greed to stay in power, greed to be worshipped by the supporters, greed for women, greed for peddling drugs through these idiots and sharing his intake lucratively to satisfy himself and his leeches. When election time comes, these leeches will show the masses that his boss is more popular than the other opponent. When others are complaining about these politicians, the leeches will make sure that they don't hear all these but pursue what they believe and make the other also believe their boss is the best, while a country like that is on the verge of collapse. Show me a country that is on the brink of economic collapse and I will show you the idiotic supports who work for that regime. Sometimes these idiotic leeches don't know they are willingly accepted themselves as slaves to a political party, but they are. They don't care what will happen to their motherland in the future, as long as they get the carrot in their mouths on time. Even their children have no future in those countries. In countries like that, gasoline is a luxury. Food prices are soaring high, taxes are high, public transportation in total disarray, government hospitals are full but no adequate medicines. From a government servant who works as a peon to the president of the country, are bribe takers, manipulators, getting up every morning with the thought of how much will they make today. 2. Educated people who seek quick personal gain. Most of these people have been in the universities for a long time and, studied hard and, have become top job seekers inclusive of going into political appointee level. Their main aim is to seek short-term prosperity. When a government's ruling party changes, their jobs are changed. They willingly make themselves to become slaves to the ruling party or their minister for personal gain. Because of this pathetic situation, a country will never go forward as though they know what is right and what should be done, in a certain situation, and they keep themselves silent. They don't think of changing the system but get the benefits from all over the place so their personal gain is only looked after. Their children study abroad, when they are sick they to foreign hospitals, they drive the best of cars, they get unlimited fuel, etc. You see a system like this could transform a whole nation into slaves. I could name many countries like this but would like you to identify them so that you will understand the gravity of becoming a land of slaves. Of course, we have few wise who want to serve mankind here and there who has no chance when a country or a nation is being enslaved by a system. But when the political slaves decide the future and fate of a country, this will make that country bankrupt in no time. Next on my list is, terrorists and suicide bombers. Though some people like to call them promoters of ideology, I would call them the cultists. Turning back to the word of God, in the Holy Bible, the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 13 says, Thou shalt not kill. This verse is a two-edged sword. It says one must not kill someone as well as one must not kill himself. If you go to Wikipedia you will find many occurrences of mass suicide attempts because of religious beliefs. The history is very clear in recording that in 312 AD when Emperor Constantine established one Christianity group only system which today we call Roman Catholicism, he ordered 12,000 opposing Christians to be killed because he wanted to establish what he believed as a gateway for the problems he faced in Israel due to religious conflicts. If being a person with common sense, if you think wisely, you will agree that there could be only one truth and there cannot be two truths. There could be one truth but millions of lies. Today we have 41,000 beliefs and religions and we should know that only one could be true and all others will have flaws. Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 14 said, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Leadeth to life means everlasting life and Jesus Christ himself said only a few will find that gate and only a few will make it. 
This is a very serious statement from the Savior himself as we find 25% of the world population is Roman Catholic while 25% of the world population is Muslim. When Jesus said only a few, do you take 25% as few or out of a 7 billion population a few millions as few? A very good point to think and come to a good conclusion. If it is a few millions out of 7 billion, where are they? Read and study the Bible if you want to know who they are? Once again I like to quote from the Holy Bible on this from the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This verse is very clear to tell us who will enter that narrow gate. I know it is very easy for someone to say that Jesus Christ is Lord but it is very hard for someone to believe in his, her heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by God the Father. Do you think Catholics believe it? I doubt it very much as even the second coming of Jesus Christ to this earth they say is symbolic and not a reality. The infiltrated doctrines of Satan have bound the Catholic Church of receiving salvation. It is really a sad situation and one must pray earnestly to God for their salvation. Coming back to the point the terrorists and suicide bombers are taken on a ride by the power-hungry slave masters so that they can achieve their goals even letting their own people lose their lives on false promises. These people are given and persuaded to lay down their lives for a lie and that is why I call it a cult. Most of the time these people bring misery to their own than others, as they want man-made laws to be practiced by all, according to their understanding of their religion. Anyone who goes against their understanding of the belief will be killed whether they are their own flesh and blood or otherwise. My next point is, slaves to medications. Pharmaceutical business today is a trillion dollar business. One person out of three is suffering from a sickness where he, she will go to a doctor at least once in three months. The medications that come in the market will create other sicknesses in the long run. Sicknesses are created in laboratories. Some say HIV is one of them apart from many. Every day new diseases are found. They may be created in laboratories for financial gain or for depopulation purposes. SARS, Ebola, Corona are a few. When a biological weapon is created in a lab, they make sure to create the vaccination also for the same but wait until their desired targets of destruction are met. Why manipulated medicines or diluted medications? First and foremost one should understand that medications and pharmaceutical companies do not make medications because they love sick people or they value human lives or they desire to make humans healthier. They create and find medications so that their pocket will be full and their respective companies will show massive profits and the owners of those billion dollar companies will be filthy rich. When it comes to vaccinations for the infants, most of the time vaccinations are altered to have diverse effects on little children so that they will have to take medicines for so many illnesses from an early age, which will drive them to be carrying some sort of disorder when they are growing. Even modern-day doctors are trained in such a way that they will always prescribe the more popular and expensive brands when it comes to treating patients. On a side, sometimes they also make a little commission on prescribing of more profitable medicines. After some time when the companies find out the after effects or the defects a particular treatment carries and then the company discontinues that medicine and comes out again with the same medicine under another name. We all know cancer is the deficiency of vitamin B17. Instead of introducing vitamin B17 to a patient, the pharmaceutical companies have on offer so many other preventive medications or alternatives other than vitamin B17, so that they will make money until the patient dies after a few years. In this modern world, the best could happen to an individual is to be healthy and God's grace is upon them where you cannot expect that from humans who are into creating medications. In conclusion, I would like to quote from the Holy Bible what Jesus said about children. Gospel of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 14 But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not, to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ wanted children to come to him and said do not forbid them coming to him. What happens when they are sick and unhealthy? The next online is workplace slavery. We all know that in this modern world, a work shift is 8 hours and 9 hours with a break for meals. If you are doing a job like that, you are blessed. 
Now the modern world has shifted this somehow to make a worker's job harder to accomplish in 8 hours by loading work on one person to handle where he, she is unable to do it is determined but automatically they are shifted for long hours. Let us see what happened to the Jews who were in slavery in Egypt. Book of Exodus chapter 1 and from verse 8 Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. 9 And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we, 10 Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it comes to pass, that, when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. 11 Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pethom and Ramses. 12 But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. 13 And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. 14 And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field, all their service, wherein they made them serve, was with rigor. This situation comes because of envy. When someone in your workplace finds out that you are smarter than your immediate boss, he will make sure that he will load you with more work to make you lose the enthusiasm you had towards your job. As the children of Israel were very successful in all their dealings and becoming lucrative and flourishing by the day the Egyptians were planning how to make a stop to that. So finally a king who is not known who Joseph is, enthroned. Now let's see what happened when Moses went to the Pharaoh asking permission to go and worship God Almighty for three days. Book of Exodus chapter 5 and from verse 3 And they said, The God of the Hebrews hath met with us, let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the desert, and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence, or with the sword. 4 And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works? get you unto your burdens. 5 And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. 6 And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people, and their officers, saying, 7 Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick, as heretofore, let them go and gather straw for themselves. 8 And the tale of the bricks, which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them, ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle, therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. 9 Let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. Now we see how slavery becomes more severe where the Israelites will be made to work, work and work. This system still exists in the world even today in the 21st century. Most of the Middle Eastern job seekers fall into this trap as they are being used by their masters as slaves. If you are a victim of this it is time that you turn to God to be independent. Just imagine a man who goes to work at 7 in the morning and returning home at 9 at night? Does he have time for his family? I do not think so. Last but not least in my list is mobile phone phobia. This is the only kind of slavery that you become willingly on my list. Today in the 21st century we find mobile phones have made you a slave as you are addicted to them. Though I am not an anti-mobile phone guy but think about how many hours do you spend with your mobile for a day? If it is more than half hour a day, you have become a slave to your phone unless you do all your office and business work with your mobile. Remember addiction also make you a slave. Recently I saw a very good example of this phobia in a video clip, which made me think how stupid are we to do things which we shouldn't while using a mobile phone. The story goes like this, a mother who carries her infant in one arm and a bag of garbage in the other is coming towards the garbage bins nearby while talking over the phone and without realizing, puts the infant into the garbage bin and carries the garbage bag and put that in her back seat and drives away while conversing on the phone. Anything could happen when you are a slave to your mobile phone as you may do so many mistakes just by being a slave to your mobile phone. We find so many accidents taking place because of the wrong use of mobile phones. When you consider all these points I have tabled here, I believe 95% of the world population is under slavery today. The day that you realize this you may turn back to God for help and he will help you to come out of all these kinds of slavery. I hope this video is an eye-opener for you and may God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Thank you for watching, reading and listening to our stories. Encourage us more to bring super stories.
subscribe to our channel and push the bell icon so you may know when we upload our next story instantly.